Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome back. Today on Milanese Math, we're going to be talking about scientific notation versus standard form, and I'm going to show you how to convert between the two. And as always, if you want to follow along with this worksheet, you can find it at the first link in the description below. Now, what you're looking at here is not part of your notes, and I don't need you to write any of this down. I just want you to watch. So scientific notation gives scientists and mathematicians a quick and easy way to write very large numbers or very small numbers. So when we have a large number, like uh, 700 as an example, in standard form, that's 700. But we can, rec uh, we can rewrite that in scientific notation as 7.0 times 10 to the second power. Or for example, we could use another really large number like 35,000 and rewrite it as 3.5 times 10 to the fourth power. Similarly, we could take small numbers like 0.013 and rewrite it as 1.3 times 10 to the negative second or 0.0067 as 6.7 times 10 to the negative third power. Now, what happens is when we get really large numbers or really small numbers, scientific notation is gonna pay off and make our lives a lot easier. But how does it work? Well, as a quick refresher, um, there's a few things that are unique to scientific notation. First of all, look at this, our first example. See that number out in front? Notice that each time the number out in front is a number greater than or equal to one, but less than 10. So it's a number in between one or 10. It could be one or anything, all of the decimal points all the way up to, but not including 10. Similarly, like on this one, it was 3.5, 1.3, 6.7. All of those are numbers between one and 10. And then the rest of it, it always has a times 10 to the something power. And whatever that exponent is, like on this first example, two, it tells you how many spaces that you need to move the decimal point over uh, in order to get the standard form equivalent of the number. So for example, uh, if you look over here on the standard form, 700 is really 700.0. We don't usually write it like that, but it's understood that the decimal point is after the last number. Well, remember this has an exponent of two, and that's because we had to bump that decimal point over two places to now represent it as a number between one and 10. So the reason or the way that we got 7.0 was by moving this decimal point over two places. So we had to write an exponent of two. Same thing with 35,000. Um, that number 3.5, it would, uh, right now the decimal point is right here. If we had just moved it one place, we wouldn't have a number between one and 10. If we moved it two places, still not, that would be 350. This would be 35. Those are not numbers between one and 10, but 3.5 is. So that's how we knew how to stop. And then we just need to count up how many times did we move it? Well, we moved it four times, okay? The same is true with really small numbers, except they have negative exponents. So in other words, to go from 0 0.013 to 1.3, we would have to move the decimal point two places. And so that's where the negative two comes from. And then over here, one, two, three, three places is where the negative three comes in. Now, sometimes teachers will try to get you to memorize if you're going to the right or the left, it's negative or positive. And I've seen a lot of students kind of get confused on the memorization of that. So what I always tell my students is, let's just use common sense. Let's not memorize anything about left or right, positive or negative. Let's just remember that big numbers like this, 735,000, big numbers have a positive exponent. See, they have a two and a four. Really small numbers, like numbers less than one, so these little decimal point ones, the small numbers are the ones that have a negative exponent. So big numbers, ultimately, in scientific notation, have a positive exponent, and small numbers have a negative exponent. Okay, so let's use that, and now let's flip over and take a look at the worksheet. Okay, so let's take a look at number one. The directions say to convert from standard form to scientific notation. So they've given you the number in its standard form and they want us to rewrite it as a number between one and 10 and then times 10 to the something power. Okay, so let's take a look here. First, what I typically do is I identify where the decimal point is in standard form and then I just start moving until I get a number between one and 10. So right now, the decimal point is after that last zero. 
If I moved it only one position, now it would be 410. That's not a number between one and 10. Okay, if I moved it again, now it's 41.0, still not between one and 10. But if I move it a third time, now 4.1 is a number between one and 10. So I've got my lead number. It's gonna be 4.1 times 10 to the something power. Well, how many times did I move my decimal place? Well, I moved it one, two, three places. So it's either gonna be to the positive third power or to the negative third power. And if you remember from those examples that we looked at, big numbers have positive exponents. 4,100 is a big number, so it's gonna be to the positive three. Let's try another one like that. Number two is 36,800. Right now, the decimal point is right there, okay? So let's count over and keep moving the decimal point until uh, we have a number between one and 10. Okay, that's not gonna get it. That's not gonna get it. That's not gonna get it. But this one will, 3.68, okay? 3.68 is between one and 10. So that is gonna be my lead number. 3.68 times 10 to what power? How many times did I move it? One, two, three, four places. And 36,800 is a large number, so it's gonna be a positive four, okay? Now, sometimes people look at that and they say, well, 36,800, it's kind of easy just to write that. Why would you bother writing it in scientific notation? Well, there's lots of reasons, but particularly when the numbers get really large, like for example, number three. Let's take a look at number three. Um, right here is where the decimal is currently. Now, if you kind of, the more you do this, the more you can kind of skim through there and realize that ultimately that decimal point is gonna have to land in between the seven and the eight, so that it's 7.854. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that down. 7.854 times 10 to, what would the exponent be? Well, let's count over and see how many places we need to move it from where it's at in standard form to where it needs to land in scientific notation. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven places. And since that number is huge, I know that my exponent is going to be positive. Okay? All right, well, what if the numbers are really small? In other words, numbers less than one. Okay, well, this number four is a pretty good example, 0.025. Now, if I go to start moving my decimal point, if I moved it one place, now it would be 0.25. That's still not quite between one and 10. I would have to move it another position and now I've got 2.5, which of course is between one and 10. So we've got 2.5 times 10. And how many places did I move it? One, two. I moved it two places, but ultimately in standard form, the 0 0.025 is a small number, and that helps me remember that my exponent has to be negative. So that would be to the negative second power. Okay, let's try another one like that. Uh, here we go. One, two, three, four places. Now, I just kind of glanced at that and I noticed right before I started that it's gonna have to land in between the four and the one to get it to be a number between one and 10. So it's 4.13 times 10. How many places did I move? One, two, three, I moved four places, but I'm gonna call this negative four because that number in standard form is a small number. And as I just remember for myself, small numbers get the negative exponents. So number six is definitely gonna have a negative exponent, right? That's a very, very small number between, um, it's less than one. So I know ultimately I'm gonna have a negative exponent. That's just sort of like another mental check to make sure that you got the right answer. Okay, here we go. How, where would that, just kind of glance at it, think where would that number have to land? I think it's gonna, I'm sorry, where would the decimal have to land? It would have to be between that first three and the one right there because then it would be 3.1345. So let's count how many times do I have to move that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven places. Okay, so let's write down our uh, lead number, 3.1345. And I had to move it seven places, but this is a very small number, so it's gonna be a negative seven. Okay, so with that sort of practice and background, I want you to go ahead and try numbers seven through 12, and then we'll pick up below that on number 13. 
Assuming you've had a chance to do that, let's now look at number uh, 13, which is essentially the opposite directions. They're giving you the number in scientific notation and they just want you to rewrite it in standard form, okay? So this is where that mental check of big numbers have positive exponents, small numbers have negative exponents. This is where I feel like common sense, it'll help you figure out which direction you need to move the decimal. So right now I've got a four and a five. Now I'm not actually gonna put the decimal in between the four and the five. I know I need to count three places, either to the left or the right. And the reason I know that it's three is because of this exponent up here. It's telling me that that decimal point needs to move three places from where it's at but it's a positive exponent. So ultimately, my final answer in standard form is gonna be a big number, a, a number greater than one. So if the decimal point were right here, I have to move it three places and I'm gonna move it to the right. So one, two, three, so that when I'm done, I fill in these blank spots with zeros as placeholders. And now I have a number 4,500. Now, again, I always tell my students to think big numbers have positive exponents because if you had accidentally forgotten and gone to the left, you would have had a really small number and hopefully that would have said, hey, something went wrong here because I had a, a small number, but my exponent was positive. Let's take a look at one like number 14. Okay, so I know that the digits here are 1778. I know I have to count five places because it's, uh, it's got an exponent of five. And I know that my final answer is gonna be a small number. In other words, a number less than one. So I'm gonna to count to the left on this example, uh, five places so that it'll be a really small decimal. So here we go. I'm gonna start in between the one and the seven. I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five. That's where my new decimal point goes. Now in between each one of these uh, spaces that we counted, I need to put zeros as placeholders. So in standard form, it would be 0 0.00001778. Now some people will put a zero out in front, like 0, 0.0. If it makes you feel better, you can do that. Mathematically, it's the same value. Okay, let's do one more kind of similar to that. We have 6.3 times 10 to the ninth. From doing this a bunch, I know that that's gonna be a big number because it has a a uh, large exponent that's positive, that is gonna be a really big number when we're done. So I've got a six and a three, and I'm gonna count to the right so that my final answer is a large number. And I'm gonna count nine spaces starting in between the six and the three. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's where my new decimal point is. Now I'm gonna go through and fill in these with zeros. And that is gonna be my final answer, okay? So this was just a quick refresher in scientific notation and standard form and how to go back and forth between the two of them. Hopefully this video was helpful and if it was, consider subscribing to the channel. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.